Okay, just. Okay. And just as a, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone back to uh, our ongoing quest or journey to build a culture of em empathy and contribute to the uh, empathy movement. Um, just want to acknowledge we are recording this call for educational and promotional purposes. And so what I'd like to do is just to go around, we're going to do a short check in, uh, take about 30 seconds to share. Um, if you have any questions, comments from the last session, or you can speak to how your buddy call went, or any short reports from uh, facilitating uh, your own empathy circle over the past week. Okay, and I'll just go around, I'll start on, let's see, everyone is not on camera, so I will start with uh, Dr. Lisa, or as affectionately known as Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so no questions right now. Um, well, I guess I do have one question. The last time... I know next, this time we're doing challenges. Next time, are we still doing challenges? Um, and my buddy call was with Dwayne and it was a, a good buddy call. Thank you. And next we'll go with Alex. Evening, and then everyone. Teresa will be after. Thank you. <laughs> um, Yes, so my name is Alex. I'm from England, but I live in the Czech Republic and haven't really lived in England most of my life. Um, and yeah, pleasure to be here. And last, uh, yeah, this weekend, I got the pleasure of speaking with Katie and it was a really, really good chat. So <laughs> nice to see you, Katie. Um, here we go. I don't know who to pass to. Thank you. Next is Marisa and then Jen. Hi everyone. Um, I don't think I have any questions regarding um, today's session. I am looking forward to practicing um, the challenges in the facilitation process again today. Um, I was able to touch base with Wayne this week, which was great. And um, it was nice because we were trying to touch base the week before and didn't get a chance to. So I was really happy that we were able to do so. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, Jen is next and then Katie. Hi, everyone. Um, glad to be here today. I don't have any questions right now, um, but I can share that I had my buddy call with Larry this uh, last week and we had a really good chat um, and a really good empathy circle uh, time. And it was, I feel like it went really deep um, and it was, yeah, very enjoyable. Thanks. Thank you, Jen. Katie's next and then Gabby. Yeah, so uh, I don't have any questions. I um, really enjoyed the buddy call I had with Alex. Um, now speaking to a few different people in the training, I'm, I'm really enjoying the connections I'm making. And um, yeah, with uh, you, Duane and Gabby helped to host um, a circle during the last week. And I think it was uh, my favorite one I've been a part of. And um, yeah, I got the chance to timekeep and kind of uh, facilitate and, and yeah, I really liked it. Thank you, Katie. Gabby is next and then Sayan time. Hey, hello everyone. Uh, so I had a chance to have my body call with Isa, that she's not here, but was very inspirational. And I had a chance also to speak with Bill. And yeah, looking forward for, for our circle and um, learnings and exchanges tonight. Thank you. Uh, I did not have a body call last week. Um, I do not recall doing anything particularly related to uh, the facilitator training last week. Uh, I had an opportunity, so I'm part of a church care group and uh, somebody there has a parent who's um, very close to death. And uh, there was an opportunity to uh, practice some of the skills that were learned here. And uh, that was uh, 
insightful. Uh, it obviously didn't involve any timekeeping or uh, maintaining structure in the same way, but um, um, it was just very interesting that way. But other than that, like as part of the facilitated training, I couldn't. I'm I'm supposed to do that session also maybe this week, the last week party call, and whoever else I party call with maybe this week. So probably carry on. I have no clue uh, about the challenges today or what exactly is going to happen today. So would be very happy for any insight into that. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, you're next and then John. Well, I don't have any uh, questions at the moment. <clears throat> I had uh, not one, but two buddy calls this week with Duane and Linda. Both were uh, really interesting, wide ranging chats. And um, I, I started trying to plan my own kind of experimental uh, empathy circle, um, empathy circles. I advertised on Facebook to uh, three groups I belong to, a sort of conservative group, a sort of progressive group, and a just sort of unpolitical group. I got no response from the unpolitical group or the conservative group of about eight people uh, from the progressively inclined group have, have uh, enthusiastically volunteered. So next step is I'm sending out doodle schedulers. Doodle, yeah. See what happens. Thank you, Daniel. John is next and then Marley. Hello. Um, I know no questions at the moment. We I did connect with Marley last week. We were we were both uh, had a lot on our plate, so we scheduled it early in the week right away and, and uh, had a great chat and was uh, really appreciative to hear another perspe perspective on how all this is landing. And uh, it made me, you know, look forward to, to today's session, particularly to, to getting into the, the objections. So looking forward to it. Thank you, um, Marley and then Leslie. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, no, no particular questions. And um, same as Dawn, just had a. I was glad to be able to connect and have a short, um, interesting conversation. And um, that's all for now. Thank you, uh, Leslie, and then Taria. Yeah, um, had a chance to to ask some questions about challenges to both Bill and Lou, um, whom I got to um, have a have a buddy call with and just general check ins. Um, and those questions mostly are about um, particular types of challenges. I'm really inspired um, at the moment to to take empathy circle um, into the bridging bridging divides realm, and so really curious about those kinds of challenges and had an opportunity to regroup with my son um, who had done the empathy circle facilitator training with me last year and we had a, a buddy call at home. It was really great. Thank you. Uh, Turia and then Joyce. Oh, hello everyone. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm so happy to land here. <laughs> it's been a very energetic morning so far. And I'm very curious about challenges, and I can't wait to learn from everyone else. I don't feel resourced to meet challenges, but I am resourced to receive guidance and wisdom. And I had the most inspiring call with Altonia this week, and it continues to inspire me every day. I remember it several times every day, and I'm really very grateful. So that's all I have. Thank you, Joyce, and then Mike. I can fully identify with Turia. I do not necessarily feel ready for challenges, but I better learn, so I'm, uh, I'll take it on. And um, had a very good uh, buddy call with Bill this week and um, got a little more comfortable. I still have trouble figuring out how to get into these meetings, and today I was so frustrated I was ready to say, well, I'm not smart enough to do this, but I figure it out eventually, and I get in on Late, but here. <laughs> 15. Well, thank you very much, um, Mike. Uh, hi, I had a buddy call with Celine Aitken, uh, and um, I also uh, participated yesterday in a uh, empathy circle. I was not facilitating, but I was witnessing a really excellent facilitator, uh, Timothy Reagan from KPFA. Uh, 
who facilitated this uh, meeting between the candidates, some of the candidates for Congressional District 11. And one of the candidates in particular really needed a lot of facilitating. So it was quite a, quite a, a learning experience. Well, thank you very much, Mike. And uh, now I'm gonna turn it over to Lou and Celine. Thanks, Dwayne. So now's the part of the the, the first the pre-session training or this part of the training where we answer the questions that you have asked either in this session or in the feedback forms. So we reviewed the feedback forms and made a list of the questions and Celine and I are going to alternate answering them. Um, so the first question is, um, what do you what do you do if a listener is missing the speaker? In other words, they're just missing what the speaker is saying, or they're adding to what the speaker is saying, like adding their own experience or adding their opinion or something like that. So Celine, do you want to take that one? You're mm -hmm. muted, Celine. What I've done is as the facilitator, when the turn is over, actually, you know, I, my, I will add a little something and I'll say something like, I also heard you say that such and such was very important to you. You know, something like that and acknowledge something to try to make sure that the, what I imagine is the essential part of their message has been received. Um, so that's, that's one thing I've done that I, that I think has been very effective. And in that way, I'm not correcting the, the listener and I am hopefully giving the speaker a little bit more of a sense of being fully heard. I don't know, do you have any other suggestions, Lou? Yeah, and you're saying that's what you do if you, if you perceive that the uh, listener has missed a, an important thing that speakers said. Yes. Right. So you would add you would add it in by saying, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I and then I would say, you know, if the speaker is adding their own opinion or agreeing or disagreeing or adding their own experience, I would just remind them. I it depends on how big it is. If it's a little teeny thing, I would let it go. But if it's pretty big, then I would step in and it would interrupt them and say, you know, your role as the listener is to just reflect back what you're hearing the person say right now you're kind of saying whether you agree or not or you're adding your experience in this area and you could say that when you're it's your turn to speak if you'd like but right now when you're a listener you want to just reflect back what the person's saying so kind of reminding them what their role is um okay great um what if they're actually wrong <clears throat> what if the what if you perceive that the listener has misinterpreted something yeah, so uh, I would I would allow the speaker to try to uh, respond to that and say, no, no, you missed it. Uh, you know, this is what I was saying. So you want to give you want to give the speaker time to work that out with the listener. Um, if the speaker is um, having a lot of trouble doing that, <laughs> then you might assist as the uh, facilitator. You know, usually when the speaker gets missed significantly uh, by the listener, the speaker will either say, no, no, this is what I meant, or the speaker will decide uh, it's too different, it's too big, or I can't, I don't know what to do. So they'll say, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. And then they'll go on. Um, I might let that happen once. If it happens twice, then I probably would do something about it because the speaker is likely to have a growing discomfort. I mostly monitor how the speaker is responding <clears throat> uh, in deciding when to intervene. Okay, second question is, um, uh, what if what if someone in your circle uh, is really like appears to be in kind of a crisis? situation they are having a lot of difficulty they're in a very emotional state and you get kind of worried about them as a facilitator about whether they're okay or not and um, my answer to that is you want to listen to them and let them be heard like any other participant but then you also maybe want to afterwards tell them 
uh, here, here are some, maybe have some resources available, crisis resources available, links to hotlines or uh, crisis lines that they could get some additional help. Uh, you don't want to just kind of leave them if you really if you really think that they might be in trouble. Uh, or and you could also just make a general statement about that to everyone in the circle uh, while the circle is going on. Um, you could make that part of your pro forma thing. Um, and I think Altonia, we were talking about this before the session, and Altonia had some links that she posted in the chat. Maybe Altonia, if you could post those again so that people, everyone could have them, that would be great. Okay. Okay. Um, next question is, what about body language? When you're a silent listener, or I guess even if you're the listener, um, how and I guess Celine's going to answer this, how much how much um, should you should you monitor your body language and 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 is body language um, oh, um, uh, can it be distracting or can it be an interruption to what the speaker is saying? Well, I think it can be, and if it's something extreme like you know a lot of a lot of movement and so on, I think it can be a distraction. And I think as facilitator, I, I would probably say something if, if that were the case. Uh, but I also have seen body language that indicates this is how a person deals with their stress. You know, for example, the movements like this, for example. And I, I don't say anything about that. And often uh, people, as they relax, don't do that anymore. And I might as facilitator be taking some deep breaths and even saying so and letting it be seen that I'm taking a deep breath. Um, I have been asked a question somewhat similar about whether I look at people or I look at the camera and I didn't know how to answer that. So I mean, that that's at some point I'd like to hear from folks about that. But Currently, I just look wherever I look. And I do try to remember myself to take deep breaths and feel my feet and kind of center myself because I think it affects everybody. That's what I'd say. Linda, you wanted to say something? You're muted, Linda. Just briefly, uh, body language can be interpreted uh, a lot of different ways. So. If you don't, if you're not agreeing with the speaker, even though you're reflecting and you're doing like this when they're talking, or you're doing like this, you know, one way or the other. So, uh, and I say that because I don't have a poker face, so I do make a effort <laughs> to um, silence myself and try to hold a neutral. Yeah, and I say eye rolling and grimacing. You don't want to do that. <laughs> um, you know, slightly nodding your head or smiling as a way of acceptance that you are accepting one not not that you're accepting the content of what the person's saying but that you're receiving their what it is that they are saying and then when you reflect it back you know that then you're you're uh, showing your understanding of it but again uh uh reflecting is not agreeing with with what they are saying and, that, and that's sometimes something you might need to say sometimes because sometimes listener uh, listeners are reluctant to reflect something back that they really disagree with, <laughs> um, and and they just need to be reminded that reflecting is not agreeing. Okay, uh, next question is about what if the listener takes a long time to reflect back what the speaker is saying, and it cuts significantly into the speaker's time, like this, like the reflector is taking more time to reflect back than the speaker is actually taking to speak, and and this does happen sometimes <laughs> because people are not used to reflecting back and they're learning that skill and and they use a lot of words um, or they it takes them a long time and if i would say when in as a facilitator if that's happening in my circle and it's pretty severe i will actually give the speaker a little more time you know i'll just pause the timer and give them a little bit more time uh or i'll say maybe their time is up and i'll and, and if they haven't They've only gotten to speak like once or once and another little thing. I'll say, do, do you want to, is there one more idea that you would like to express, you know, before your turn is over? Um, 
I wouldn't, cr I, I would be cautious of, about criticizing, saying anything critical about the, the reflector, at least initially, <laughs> until you get to know them better and they have more experience because people will get better at reflecting over time and you want to give them time to do that. Um, but if it goes on for a very long time, you could say just something about, you know, try to make your reflection less time than the speaker takes expressing it, you know, see if you can do that as a goal. Yeah. Um, okay, next question is, um, uh, what about language differences? What if somebody uh, uh, speaks a different language and they're difficult to understand or it takes them a long time to express themselves? Celine? Um, well, I, I would let the speaker know that I really want to hear what they're saying and understand them. And would they help me um, by speaking slowly and um, kind of a, we're working together here. We're collaborating so that everybody needs to speak and to be heard can be satisfied. Okay. Um, and the last question is, what if, what if somebody Excuse is, me, um, yeah, go ahead. Have, <clears throat> oh, go on. Yeah, go ahead. Wayne. I, I have a comment. Um, I, I also think it's important to, as to be aware of, of my own biases that are built in. I mean, if you look at how the questions asked, you know, having difficulty understanding someone doesn't mean that they're not communicating clearly. <laughs> and so I think it's really important. Um, I'm married to, my wife is Japanese. She speaks English as a second language. And one of the things that I learned to adjust was my perceptions about her as a non-native speaker. And simply, you know, I learned to focus more on connecting and communicating. So I really also think it's important to have an awareness and a perception that even though English might be my first language, for other people, a different language is their first language and to be aware of our own biases. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Duane. Altonia, you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to let everybody know that I put all the hotline numbers um, in the chat. The National Crisis Line, um, Suicide Prevention, Veterans Crisis Line, and it's also a um, the crisis line number for counseling. Thanks, Altonia. Yeah, yeah, and the last and the last question was, what if someone's really disruptive in the circle? And and there's lots of ways that someone might um, be disruptive, and that's some of what we're going to practice today. Um, and so the answer to that, you'll get a chance to try that out. But I, I think gen as a general principle, you know, if somebody is uh, a stepping out of the process of the circle, then you want to, as facilitator, you want to kind of name that, you know, you're, it's not your turn to speak right now, or you're asking questions. And as a, as speak, as a listener, you, you know, that's not something you do. You just, you just um, reflect back what the person is saying. So kind of name what's happening and um, uh, maybe trying to ignore, you could, you could listen and try to acknowledge what the person is complaining about um and then and then try to explain why we do the circle the way we do and ask them to step back into their role and uh it's also possible that they may not be able to do that um in which case you know uh maybe maybe the circle isn't for them or or maybe that circle isn't for them um yeah okay I, I, lou i want to add a, something um sure. i rely a lot on two things in terms of we're going to do the the challenges today also they're going to be little challenges but still i rely on the values and i rely on the roles and so to say it you know instead of saying you're being disruptive or something i would say we have a value of mutuality and that means that everybody's going to get an equal turn or um Again, the roles, please stay with your role of the quiet, the, the listener. Yes. Thanks, Celine. That's, I love that. And it, and it fits with the general principle of you want to invite people into what you do want them to do, not criticize them for what they are doing. 
say like, don't do this, you know, you're not supposed to do that. Say, like Celine just said, well, we have the value of this and that's why the circle is structured this way. And so I'm asking you to do that, you know, could you, could you do that? Okay. All right, great. So I'm handing it to, who am I handing it to? Dwayne? No. Larry. 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 Go ahead, Larry. All right, everybody. We're going to go into our breakout rooms in just a minute. <clears throat> I've got just about three minutes to go over a little description. We'll go into our breakout rooms and give each of you time to practice facilitating a short empathy circle. The context is that you are facilitating an empathy circle with people who are not familiar with the practice. And if you feel ready for it, you can ask for the facilitation challenges to handle during your turn to facilitate. You do not need to have any challenges. Just select the challenges if you feel ready. And you can have a choice of none, low, or medium. And only the facilitators will be doing the challenges. Uh, rem reminder, the facilitator will be the first listener, sets a three minute time and end with a, a debrief. Um, and then that will repeat for participant two and participant three. So just a reminder of the facilitators do the challenges and I think that covers it and unless there are any questions. I'll, I'll post a link to my notes, which does have the PDF how to in the the notes. Great, Larry, thank you. Okay, I uh, just want, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Bill. No, finish what you were gonna say, Larry. That's fine. I was just gonna say we're, now we're past to um, Antonia, I think. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, so we're about to go into the breakout rooms and it, sometimes the numbers are not exactly, um, some uh, in some rooms I've put uh, two facilitators together. So uh, take a few minutes to kind of work out what your roles will be, that's all. Okay. Can, any no, can, I, can I say one more word about that? Yeah, John? sure, go ahead. Um, just, just wanted to say why we do this. So the reason that we give you the option of experiencing a little bit of challenge in the circle is because the people that show up to the training have a lot of awareness and they have a lot of skill and the circles that you facilitate in the training go very smoothly most of the time there's not much that happens but when you do a circle out in the world with people uh there are things that happen in the circle that are a little bit of a challenge and we wanted to give you a chance to experience what those are and figure out how you might respond to them rather than just letting you experience it the first time out in the world. So that's the reason behind offering these. And we're not trying to make it difficult for you. We just want you to, you know, have a chance to try that out. So. Okay. If any other questions or comments. If you want it, if you feel ready for it. Yeah. Right. If you, any questions or comments from the trainers before we go? All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, Okay. All right. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Oh, it worked out. I'm so happy. Am I supposed to be in here? Yeah, you? yeah, Linda. I just wanted to. Um, okay. Right. It just we, you know, the numbers didn't work out exactly. That's okay. So I wanted to give you a chance if you want to facilitate this or fine, or you can be, you know, kind of a participant or whatever. I'll, you, I'll, you tell me what to do. I'm just. <laughs> I'm okay. Just glad I didn't miss it. I was like, I miss a lot. I'm just like, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do the overall facilitation and then, uh, you know, jump in if you want or, or you know, can, when you feel comfortable. Okay. Do you want me to do the time? I can do that for you. Um, well, you'll do the, oh, sure, the overall time. The, the people who are practicing the facilitation will do the three minutes. See, and, I told you. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be here. I'm trying to be mindful. It's really hard. Okay, today. Yeah. okay Linda, that's so fun. All okay. right, so I'll, I'll just do that. You can be a participant 
and then um, okay. we can we can work things out as need be. All right. Um, okay. So welcome. Um, and so essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to break up the time uh, between Leslie Turia and uh, Sayantan. And again, my apologies for butchering all your names, except Leslie. I think I got Leslie okay. I think <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, and Linda, I can do. And Bill, <laughs> sometimes. Um, so um, what we'll do today is that you'll do the how-to and then go right into the facilitation. Um, and then before you start, whoever wants to start, that's fine. Uh, as a facilitator, you'll keep three minute times. You'll kind of keep things moving and you'll off. Uh, um, and then also, um, what else? Oh, and then just let us know uh, if you want a challenge and if you can, what kind of challenge? Uh, you know, I'll do my best. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, this is actually, to be honest with you, a learning curve for me. Uh, you know, how much of a challenge and what kind. So it's, it's not always a perfect fit, but we try. Okay, so who would like to go first? You'll be doing the how-to and then right there. Sayanta, great, okay. Um, so you're ready, so you'll do the how-to and then you'll, you'll you know, facilitate and then you'll be the first uh, listener and you'll invite somebody to listen to you and then you'll go on. Yeah, Linda? Do we have a specific topic or the facilitators? Um, yeah, we do the topic today is uh where is it uh topic facilitate oh the facilitator you set the topic okay as a facilitator always remember to say this is my topic or whatever is alive for you that's very important okay so Anton, any questions before you start um i can let you know the level of difficulty in uh, disruptions uh, okay. in um, challenges i want right now itself right yes that's right thank you so go for whatever is the highest for you okay all right okay gotcha all right so begin hi everyone welcome um we are here for this uh, space where uh, we'll be sharing uh, in a circle. Uh, each of us will be holding the circle together by listening as we build empathy. Um, th there's this core value of uh, listening to each other that we will be emphasizing on. Um, the way we will do this, there are a few structural rules. Um, I will become the first listener and uh, anyone can volunteer to be the first speaker. And so that person who will be the speaker will be the speaker and I will be the active listener then. Everybody else will be acting as a silent listeners, holding the circle together, attentively listening to whatever the speaker wants to share. The speaker will have a total time of three minutes to speak. Uh, it is encouraged to share maybe one or two ideas at a time so that uh, the listener can reflect back those ideas accurately. I will try to reflect uh, to the best of my abilities without adding any opinions or anything else of my own. Uh, once the speaker and I keep switching like this with reflections and uh, mention of the ideas by the speaker, uh, after the allotted time is over, I will be holding up this timer each time. My mobile phone will be visible and I will hold it up if you acknowledge it. Um, and uh, that is the time, but you don't have to immediately stop if you're speaking at that point of time. You can finish whatever idea you're speaking about then. And uh, the uh, active listener can then reflect back that idea. And if the speaker feels completely heard, they can then acknowledge that to the active listener, whether they feel completely heard or not. And then the listener, the active listener becomes the speaker for the next turn and they get to decide who is the active listener they want from the other listeners, from the silent listeners. This goes around in a circle. Uh, we would probably aim for two to three circles going around like this. And uh, so the topic, uh, I would just like to remind us of the topic. The topic that we have for today, I will type it in the chat box also, is um, how do you 
deal with difficult emotions and uh, feel free if you want to talk about whatever else is alive for you also you don't have to restrict yourself to this topic um i hope everyone can see the topic um <laughs> so uh yeah are there any questions before we get on this journey where we listen to each other and try to empathize with each other great looks like uh, everybody knows everything about this process today so that's amazing so like i mentioned i will be the first listener then uh emphasizing as the active listener and you will all also be listening as the silent listeners and uh, so do i have a volunteer for who wants to be the first speaker hi linda no i'm not volunteering i'm <laughs> just asking do you want a challenge i said you can go for the highest challenge you want like a medium high whatever okay that's for you okay okay so do you want to give the challenges linda okay okay all right so linda will just give the challenges the rest of us will just be well behaved <laughs> so, high or medium okay all right got you. or very high i'm cool <laughs> okay so um so as we begin on this circle um um is anyone who wants to volunteer as the active speaker wants to be heard today on this uh, topic or anything else that you feel is alive for you i'll start i'll listen to okay. you uh uh linda i i'm seeking a speaker uh, because like i will be the first active listener as i mentioned and as a speaker you can talk about whatever you want okay. to speak about related to the topic or if there's anything else alive for you also i'll be listening and reflecting the same to you okay yes um okay. right so yeah go ahead all right uh the question how do you deal with difficult emotions and i um i had to smile almost laugh on that one because uh that is a challenge for me okay so i hear you saying that the question how do you deal with difficult emotions uh, you don't know whether to smile or to laugh at that because it is a challenge for you yes um last week i had problems with my uh iphone and i went to the um at&t who is my provider uh they sent me to t-mobile for something don't ask me why and t-mobile sent me to the apple store last week you had a problem with your mobile phone and you went to at&t who's your provider and they sent you to t-mobile and t-mobile sent you to the apple store did yes. i hear you correctly linda yes you're correct and um so of course i didn't have an appointment i was a walk in so i had to wait an hour and a half and then this gentleman asked me um uh, if he could help me and when he when i told him what the problem was i said we're going to need a technician because you know this and this is going with the phone he said well just go over there and sit and wait and somebody will be with you in a minute right so of course uh, you didn't have an appointment and you had walked in so they made you wait for the one and a half hours and then the gentleman asked like how could they help you or whether they could help you and um then they asked you to go and sit uh in the corner because you asked for a technician you said yes. you need a technician yes and by that time uh steam was if the steam could have been coming out of my ears it would have been coming out of my ears um uh because the first thing i i so i'm sitting there and i'm I'm asking God to calm me down because I'm just, you know, it's just boiling inside of me. And I'm like, okay, Linda, just calm down. Calm. So I'm talking to myself and praying and asking God to just calm me down. Yeah, and by that time like it was like literally boiling inside you and if if there was steam that would come out of you, it would come out of your ears and you were praying to God to calm you down. Yes. 
because uh, I'm not a patient person and I hate to wait. Uh, and when the guy did come, he could tell I was upset. And, but he, he did not, he, he was calm and polite and everything. And that calmed me down. He did not meet me where I was. He, you know, so he did de-escalated the situation with his response to me. So uh, I hear you saying, sorry, that's just the diamonds. So I heard you say that uh, that person, when they came, they tried to calm you down and they tried to de-escalate the situation because you are not otherwise a patient person. Um, did I hear you correctly, Linda? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that Thank was you. our time. Do, do you feel completely hurt? Yes. Okay. I'm so glad I could be there to listen, Linda. <laughs> uh, so now, as I explain the process, I will become the uh, next speaker and I will pick an active listener for myself. Everybody else will be the silent listeners holding this circle. Um, so, uh, uh, Bill, are you listening in as part of this circle? Yes. Okay. So, would you be kind enough to be my active listener? Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. So, uh, Um, hey, just before I start, uh, as part of ensuring that, you know, the active speaker listener uh, are listening and talking with each other, maybe we could just practice uh, muting ourselves when we are not talking. So uh, would really appreciate if all of us could uh, mute ourselves when we are not speaking. Uh, thank you. I, I just thought I'd mention that because otherwise it might cause disruption. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. So, uh, when I think of uh, difficult emotions, like uh, for me, anger is a very strong theme that comes up. I'll pause there, Bill. Sure. So, when you're thinking about what Linda talked about, is about strong emotions, anger is what comes up for you. Right. And um, I had an experience last week where um, somebody I was interacting with um, had uh, their father dying because of lack of medical attention. I'll post it. Okay. So you had a conversation with a person whose father died because they didn't get the kind of the medical attention they needed. Yeah. They're, they're still not dead, but they're, they're literally dying, but... Um, they can't get access to medical help. Okay, so they're in. Uh, they didn't die, but they're in the dying process, and they can't get medical help. Right, and uh, it it's just so difficult to uh, think of this as a just world when that happens. Yeah, so it's very hard to think of, about this being. You know, a just world when when some, per, a person who's critically ill can't get the medical help they need. And uh, the worst part is uh, they they are going to public healthcare because it's much cheaper than uh, uh, it's what they can afford. They can't afford uh, uh, expensive private healthcare. Help us. Sure. So they're going. They're using public um, health care because they can't afford private health care. And uh, the public health care is uh, very uh, overloaded, overburdened, and uh, with so much bureaucracy, they keep referring to each other rather than admitting the patient. So uh, I don't know if I got all of it, but um, the public health care system in your country is very overloaded. And so they kind of shuffle people around rather than getting, you know, giving them help. So his father has both kidney and heart issues. And uh, the cardio cardiologist is saying, get it checked by the kidney doctor. Till that happens, we are not going to admit him. And the nephrologist is saying, uh, get it checked by the heart doctor. Till that happens, we are not going to admit him. So essentially, um, 
the cardiologist is saying that uh, you have to get checked by this other uh, specialist, and then the other specialist is saying you have to be checked by the cardiologist, and so therefore it it results in no health care. And that was my time. And thank you so much, Bill, for being a kind listener. Sure. Thank you so much, everyone, for holding this circle. So, Bill, you're the next speaker. Okay. All right, Taria, would you listen to me? I would be happy to. Thanks. <clears throat> um, so, when I deal with difficult emotions, um, I think about you know my um, my job as a special education teacher, which I'm retired from now. Um, and, um, and one of the things that we tried to do sometimes successfully and sometimes not is to avoid what we call the power struggle. I'll stop there. Yeah. Well, hearing, hearing this topic about how we deal with difficult emotions, you have recall about your career, um, working with special ed kids and you together had an approach of um, avoiding the power struggle. Right. And what that meant is that, um, very basically, is that uh, we didn't name the student. We didn't say, you're bad or whatever. But we named the behavior. You're choosing to do this and then offer an alternative. Let me just say something about it. I know you're talking, um, but I think that's the problem in schools now. They're too gentle with the students, and I don't, uh, I, I don't agree with that. I think you need to call Linda, out the name and the behavior. Linda, uh, yes. When we are doing the circle, uh, as I had mentioned, like all of us except the act speaker and the active listener are on mute. We'll get our own turns later to, uh, you know express our thoughts, but right now it's just the time dedicated for the speaker and the active listener to okay. reflect. Okay, but I just wanted to we'll say get that. A chance later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll get it later. We can't interrupt them right now. Thank you. Okay. So, Gil, what, what I'm remembering hearing is that in this approach to avoiding power struggles, you are all very careful to not name and single out a person by name and criticizing them, but to name a behavior and to name the consequences of that behavior. Right. Because the minute you label someone, then everything is set in cement. You're bad or you're this or you're that. But when you talk about hey, you're, you're okay, but you have a choice. The behavior, the choice you made was bad, but you have all alternatives. There's room for change. I'll stop there. So really conscious of when a label occurs, then it kind of concretizes something. It concretizes an identity, a behavior, but when you present it in the terms of choice, you allow a person to access their dignity and, and to actually make a choice maybe different than they had been making. Right. Again, I think you'll give children just too much power. I think the, the adult should be running the classroom, not the child. I, I'm, I'm sorry, you did, yeah, but I, I just had to get that out. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I will go on mute. I will be muted. I will mute. I, I, yeah, I understand. It's 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 a very uh, difficult topic, and we are being very we are playing very important roles as silent listeners. So uh, I can only appreciate the role that uh, you are playing as silent listener. Uh, it's as part of holding the circle. So uh, yeah, when when we are in the silent, listener, I got it. I got it. I, I'm not telling just to you, Linda. I was just trying to emphasize that uh, the silent listener plays such an important role. So. Um, yeah, let's just try to figure out these roles so that, you know, it helps the uh, speaker feel completely heard because like we'll all get our turn. So, yeah, I just want to mention that. And yeah, let's just keep each us each of us on mute when we're not speaking, just reiterating that. Yeah. yeah. So um, in the context of the uh, of this empathy circle practice, when people object to the uh, to the rules or things, 
Um, you know, I say it, it, it doesn't mean you're not empathic. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. Um, but, um, you know, this tool is not right for you right now. Uh, but this, but these, this is what we're doing. So I don't name them, but we just name the process. And I say, um, if I correct you, it's not a criticism of you or your ideas, but to keep us in the process. And I'll stop there. That was quite a lot. Sorry, Turia. <laughs> um, yeah, mostly, mostly, I, I. I'm hearing you say, you know, strategies for um, returning to the container, to the safe container of the process and how respectful you want to be as you approach anything that is outside of what we've agreed to as the process for this circle. Yeah. Thank you, Terea. I feel fully heard. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to hear you. Ah, oh, now I do something, right? Facilitator, please remind me what I do. I've never done this before. Maria, you're the speaker now. Uh, as the last active listener, you become the speaker and you have to choose an active listener to listen to and the rest of us are the silent listeners who are holding the circle together. Oh, okay, thank you. Ah, well, Leslie, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to listen to me. Yes, of course. Oh, thank you. Um, wow. I'm kind of awed by the opportunity to share this topic in community. I'll pause there. Yeah, I'm... Um seeing and hearing you like take a moment as you are feeling awe at being able to share about this topic with others. Yeah, thank you. It, it's not often that strangers meet up together and talk about something as vulnerable as difficult emotions. And I arrived here today having quite an emotional morning hours worth of high emotion and it landed me here feeling pretty anxious and not so confident about my participation today. So I'm hearing that after what sounds like a trying morning with a lot of high emotion, you, you got to empathy circle practice today and um, just just bringing with you um, you know all of, of where you came from and, and kind of coming in maybe with a little bit of, of trepidation. Yeah, trepidation is a really good word for it. Yeah. Um, mm, it, my my body is really reactive. Um, I would say sensations of a lot of anxiety. And um, yeah, I'll just pause there. Mm -hmm. So you're really sensing in to your physical body and really aware of the anxiety that you're experiencing and, and self-witnessing. Yeah, yeah. And, and these probably obviously are all in my set of what, I might call difficult emotions because, you know, I'm torn right now actually to be so transparent with what's going on in me. And I, a part of me has real hope that I could have relief and healing. And another part of me is really feeling ashamed and embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's actually not helping my anxiety. So you're recognizing in this moment as you're reflecting, like feeling torn between sharing really vulnerably, you know, wanting this to be a really helpful and, and sort of alleviating, you know, what these emotions are, um, but also just just feeling that it, it may be counter 
um, to that for you that it, it may just sort of exacerbate it in sharing. Thank you, thank you. I feel heard and I loved your word counter and it actually um, lands me in a trickle of joy and I see our time is up. So thank you, I've, I do feel heard. Absolutely, yeah, no, just to offer that back, you're um, just kind of feeling like you're maybe just like over on the, the edges of something and maybe there's like some joy there that you're touching, but there is a word that really kind of opens something for you there. Okay, I'm going to call a timeout because um, you know, our time for uh, Sayantan's uh, facilitation. I uh, do want to give some time for feedback. So Sayantan, how did it feel? Felt good. I was just copy pasting the crisis helpline when the turn came because I was like, in case somebody wants any help, they can contact this number in case they are in a crisis situation. Uh, so, uh, I uh, I realized like Linda was moving a lot or something and uh, she had unmuted herself and uh, um, personally I found it difficult to see everybody and I can imagine that if the group was very large like seeing everybody while trying to listening listen was difficult but I was so focused on listening like it didn't matter to me what anyone else was doing as long as they did not vocally interrupt. So I was going to look for whether the speaker or the active listener were, uh, you know, showing signs of getting distracted. So that was something I was uh, observing for instead. I was not looking anymore at Linda. Uh, initially, I was like, when I saw her unmuted, it was constantly at the back of my mind that, you know, whether I should wait or when should I wait till when is a good time. But uh, there was no interruptions for a long time when she was unmuted. So I was like, no point in mentioning unless like, there is something and then she did speak eventually and uh, that was the time i am not sure if i did the best job of upholding values uh, when you were speaking bill i heard the substance of what you were saying and that sounded a better way of doing it than me i didn't find the correct words when i mentioned that uh, i you know this is what like the silent listener does i felt like i was being a little patronizing and i want to reflect on not doing that myself I want to be more gentle with how I come in. Mm -hmm. um, so saying this once made me think about like my language a little more. I really want to work on like uh, saying this in a more uh, uh, way where the way you say it, when you say that we want to name the problem rather than the people. I want that to come across in the way I say it in between the lines instead of the way I mention it. So um, that's something that I want to work on. That was my takeaway on how I said it. I don't think I did the best job there. Everything else, like I couldn't see anything else there. Hoping to hear feedback. Okay. Uh, so I'll invite uh, Turia, Leslie, or Linda um, to give uh, Santan feedback if you wish. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, in Sayantan, is that, is that correct? How to, how to pronounce? Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, right away I was struck when you were um, giving us the introduction to the circle. I had this sense that, you know, having been in a, a good number of circles, it felt very much your own. It didn't feel, um, it didn't feel canned. It didn't feel like you were sort of borrowing things that you had heard. It felt like you, it was really coming through you. And now coming to the end and hearing your self-reflection, I can see why. I can see and hear your effort um, to really to really make it your own, you know, your self-reflection in the process of doing that. So I really appreciated that. Okay, Linda or Turia? You're muted, Linda? Yeah, I think you did a great job with the introduction. Uh, you were Sianta, you were, you spoke slowly, you enunciated so, because I, I have a hard time hearing heavy uh, foreign uh, accents. So I really have to focus. But you were, I noticed that you were, you know, taking it slow and enunciating and saying, and you covered, mm, excuse me, you covered all the points. So I think you did a great job. And I think you did a great job uh, stopping me from, uh, you know, rambling on and on. So I think you did good. Okay. 
Taria, do you have anything to add? Just, um, I, I wrote some notes. I was really enjoying um, some of your language in the intro, um, particularly the line you said something about each of us holds the circle together in this way. And I just loved you dispersing and sharing the responsibility in that way. And, um, and then you used the phrase, to the best of my abilities, which also helped me lower the bar of like expectations and help me feel safe and calm. And um, I wrote down the word repetition. There was, I think that was referring to some way that I heard you re repeat different instructions in different ways that also helped me um, feel like I could catch on to what you were inviting us to. So. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I I was curious with Linda's um, expression. I wanted to just acknowledge how important this topic is. And I didn't know as, because I think I was in the listener role at that point. And I didn't know if, if that would have been, that would have been very natural for me to turn to Linda and just really want to acknowledge how important this is. And um, imagine that, hearing you more fully when it's your turn to speak, maybe that would have been my feedback for Linda, something like that. And I would like feedback on that feedback. <laughs> it's appropriate. Okay, we'll try to do that. Um, all right, so Anton, first of all, I'm really impressed by your, your understanding. You obviously understand the whole process and stuff like that. I feel very well grounded by that. Um, your how-to was great. Um, good use of the chat. Um, to reinforce that and to put that in. Um, that's, you know, we talked about, you know, last time how when people hear things three times, they tend to remember it better. Um, and also good asking questions at the end of your how to about that. Um, and um, then also you were proactive with the mute. So actually, you, if Linda had followed directions, um, then uh, you actually wouldn't have had that problem. Um, so that was that was a really good, um, uh, I thought, uh, tool. Um, the one thing, and I thought what you did, so really good job. The one thing in correcting Linda, I believe that you went on a little bit too long. And there was nothing that you were saying that was wrong. You know, everything was right. But one of the things that I do when I'm a facilitator is that the, the to get for people to get the empathy circle experience, there's this kind of flow to it. And so I always start to try to think when I can, I, I make mistakes too, by the way. Um, but I say, if intervening now would then interrupt the process more than not intervening. So generally, I let things, small things slip and then see if it comes up again and I have to address it. Um, but I'm very aware if I do intervene to try to get back into the flow. So then when I was then trying to finish up, um, I wasn't quite sure about my time, whether you had paused or not. Um, and, you know, it was a little bit, but it's, you know, but really good, um, you know, and, and, you know, I felt very comfortable. Um, so that, that's my feedback. Okay. Uh, I, I want to kind of move things along here because I want to make sure everybody gets a chance. Uh, this is my learning to try to allocate the time. So this is something I struggle with. Um, and uh, so Leslie or Taria, uh, who would like to go next? I'm quite happy to go last if Leslie is willing to go now, but I'm also willing to negotiate. So, okay. well, let's yeah. stand <laughs> um, Just, just so you all know, my my computer keeps freezing. So if you don't get an immediate response from me, it's because you're all frozen. So, okay. um, but yeah, no, I, I, I am willing. I feel kind of like not yet, like in the circle, just because I didn't speak in this last round and so jumping in again and doing facilitation like I, if you really feel strongly i i would be willing to do that but <laughs> i'll do it so so she can still be last and leslie you can 
if you want to, you can go after me. <sighs> okay, so I'll play well, B. What? I thought she, I, I didn't think. One well, of them, not ready, but we only have, we have an hour. So I allocate 30 minutes to both Maria and Leslie, and then also for them to okay. get feedback. Okay. Taria, so. I, I, I can go. I'm, I'm happy to jump in um, if, you, if you feel strongly. You'll do good, Leslie. Go for it. <laughs> it's kind of a deja vu, Linda, from last week, right? It was just like, show up and you're on. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. Okay. So, do you want any challenges? Yes. And so I do, I do want to speak to that. Um, so I really, really would, um, I'll just give the topic actually um, to, to start with and then yes, invite challenge. Um, I invite people to, um, because I'm interested in, in crossing like political and social divides, um, to, to share along that topic, um, just about your own experiences with um, other people as you try to communicate if you if you have like across some kind of divide so just sharing about your own experiences with that and then linda i would ask um for whatever challenge whatever you know like degree of challenge you could bring that would be like true true to that kind of a, a context where we're okay. talking across a divide <laughs> knowing right. that i have no idea how to handle it but i just i want the experience so yes. Just do you. Okay, exactly. Um, okay, so um, welcome everyone to the Empathy Circle. Um, just to give give everyone a sense of the, how it works for starters, um, there are three roles in the circle. There will be um, someone who is speaking, someone who is actively listening and then reflecting back what they hear to the speaker. Um, so not your own um, perspectives or opinions or ideas. You'll have time to share anything that you wish when it is your turn um, to be speaker. And then the um, silent listeners will be the rest of us. And, um, and those people will be you know, attending and holding the circle together. Um, so it begins with, I'll start by um, being the, the active listener and somebody can volunteer or I'll choose a speaker. And after we take three minutes, each of us, after that time that um, I will become the next speaker and choose my listener. And so we'll go around the circle until hopefully everyone will have a couple of times to, to speak like that. Um, we, let's see, um, when your time is up or approaching over the end of three minutes, you'll see me just hold something like this up and you don't have to stop on a dime, but just know that we're gonna round, round wind down so that everyone has their chance um, to speak and be heard. Um, I have a feeling I'm forgetting something, but um, does anybody have any questions about how, how this might work? Yes, Sayantan. Uh, like you said, when the time will be up, you'll be holding this up. So how much time do we have to speak? Yes, three minutes. Each person will have, thank you. Each person will have three minutes to speak. And as we approach that that time, I'll give you a little signal so that you have a chance to just kind of wind, wind down. Um, so again, the topic is um, just speaking from any experience you may have had um, in exchange conversation with people across some kind of social political divide um, or anything that is alive for you at this moment. You're always welcome to do that. All right, so is there, if there, are there any other questions before we get rolling? No, good to go, okay. So um, is there someone who would like to speak first and then I will be the active listener. Sayon Tan is ready to go, please do, yes. Um, should I just speak, start speaking right now? Yes, yes. And, and if you'll just pause like after every like couple of thoughts or so, give me a chance to reflect back. That would be great. Um, so um, um, I was in an university environment recently where um, 
it's a public university where uh, you know there are very strong political opinions i'll pause there mm -hmm. so you recently had an experience at a public university where there were many strong opinions yeah and that university has a history of political violence uh, among students like like literally physical violence and it's more like just uh, it feels like one branch of politics prevails there there isn't much dialogue hmm. so this uni this university has a history of violence including physical violence um, and it doesn't sound like um, there's a lot of um, dialogue that happens there very freely or easily. Right. And uh, it, it was scary how, uh, you know, opposing political opinions might be perceived that I went in with a lot of anxiety about, you know, what to share or how to share it. So it, like going in, like you, it was scary, you know, being unsure and feeling anxious about what might be safe to share or not share. And even though like I could manage to get over some of the anxiety, um, um, you could like, even though people were not just directly coming to hit you, you could feel that, you know, like, you don't fit in when you say something different, they make you feel different. And yeah, I'll pause there. Mm -hmm. So, so even if you sort of had the, the wherewithal to like share and, and, and the courage to do that, you end up like being made to feel different um, because you are and, beca and because of how they're responding. Uh, the weirdest thing was like the kind of stares you would get at each and every public place there like like everybody would be like that's that person or that person shared this opinion it was pretty intimidating like initially hmm. so even the nonverbal, like just people staring at, at somebody like it just it was an intimidating environment uh, yeah and like like it, I used to stay in the university at late at night also, and there would be people shouting slogans at you in the dark from many places. Okay, I see my time is up, and uh, yeah, I'll talk about this in the next one. I feel uh, completely okay. hurt now. Yes, and just to, to reflect back this last, like just this experience of just being very intimidating, like just even the, like you said, the people staring at you, and yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, so I will speak next um, and ask, um, let's see, Linda, would you listen? So Linda, if you'll just unmute, there we go. Okay. There we go. Um, hmm. Okay. So yeah, experience across the divide. Um, you know, it's um, it's interesting. The first thing that is is coming to me is actually um, the difficulty, just the challenge, and even frustration that I have felt. Um, you know, not from from somebody or from people on the, like sort of the other side, but people who share um, perspectives or or worldviews, and and sort of sensing. Um, how closed, like, and these are, you know, good friends, just how closed they are to, um, to, to other perspectives. I'll pause. So you're finding, uh, as we talk about this bridging divides, you're finding what's challenging is not uh, engaging with people from the other side, but people that may think like you, but they're so closed, they're not open to any anything else anybody else's perspective yeah no exactly um and and not to say that you know th that there's there's not challenge just across the board but that seems to be what gets under my skin i guess is is just um yeah um which is of course <laughs> why i'm here again at empathy circle um because you know the dynamic lends itself not to having to agree with others, but just listening to understand. And, 
and I think that's what really um, is at the the crux of of what I'm wanting to share with others. Like taking this practice out is supporting people, um, whatever the perspectives, and just knowing that you know you don't have to come together over it in the sense that you agree and um, and you see a path forward necessarily as a first step, but just that you can listen to one another. So what you said, what really gets under your skin is when people of the like minds, if you will, if when they are closed minded, that really gets under your skin. And that's another reason that you're taking this so much interest in the empathy circle is because it's an opportunity to speak and be heard without being um, challenged. And that's what you want to bring uh, to the world or to your, your group. Yeah, thank you. And I just realized I'm, that's time for me. So oh, thank you, okay. Linda. I feel hard. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay, Bill, if you would be my uh, sure. listener. And before I get started, I just want to say, I don't know why we're talking about politics in this safe circle, because we don't know each other. And when you cross over, if you don't agree with other people, they immediately get upset. So here we go, we're gonna have a lot of friction in here. But I mean, Leslie picked the subject, so I'll stick to it, but I don't think it's so appropriate at all. So you wanted to say that- uh, No, I wasn't talking, I wouldn't, it wasn't an empathy circle. I was just saying that before I got started. I'm gonna talk on whatever subject she wants, but I was just giving my opinion that I didn't think this was appropriate for strangers to be talking about politics when we don't know which side the other one is on. I, I haven't started yet. I was just giving my opinion. Okay. 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 All right, I'll start. I'll start now. Okay. Uh, let me see. Um, I have tried to engage, I'm really going now. I've tried to engage with people uh, on the other side that have a different political view uh, from mine, but um, I found it challenging for them, not challenging for me. So you've tried to engage with people who don't share your political views, uh, and it's not challenging for you, but you find that it's challenging for them. Yeah, because I'm, you know, if there's a subject, I want to talk about that subject. I don't want to call names and and make disparaging remarks and, you know, go down some rabbit hole, I, whatever the subject is, I want to talk about that. And they, the people from the other side seem to want to go down what I call the rabbit hole, just, you know, anything but that topic. So when you uh, pick a topic or someone picks a topic, you want to stick to the topic and you find that that's okay with you, but people who don't share your political views tend to um, go down the rabbit hole, as you say, and, and yeah. make accusations. And, and this is true. I had, an, a, a, I have to call her an acquaintance, but, you know, we hung out a lot because we met um, so working and she was volunteering. And we had lunch and everything together. But when it came to politics, we were on totally different ends of the spectrum. And I just told her it's best if we didn't talk about it. But then she started sending me text messages and, you know, and I asked her to stop. And she, her response was, well, that last one, that was not political. And we haven't spoken since. Uh, it's been a couple of years. Yeah. So you had a person who was an acquaintance, so you did go out and share, so you had lunch together and stuff, and they started to talk, you know, in political uh, terms, you asked her to stop, uh, and she stopped at that particular point, but then she kept on sending you these texts, provocative texts, and so on, and so you asked her to stop, and you haven't spoken since. True. Thank you. I feel fully heard. Okay. All right. Uh, Taria? get to listen again? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, I've taken, you know, we're going with Edwin to uh, both left and right wing rallies. Say that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> you have gone with Edwin to both left and right wing rallies. And I bet you don't really want me to say it five times. No, I don't. Good. Thank you. Good, good inference there. Um, and um, it was very interesting 
Um, Because when you meet a person with reflection instead of a response, there's immediate, uh, in most cases, uh, kind of a a calmness and de-escalation. I'll stop there. So, so interesting to you to experience that when you met people with reflection instead of reaction or response even, that there's immediate de-escalation. Right. And, and then you, you do find when you dive in, um, people are not just black or white. People are complex. And when you dive in, you can find areas of agreement. Mm. So when you dive in, the complexity of people shows up. But when you dive in, you can find areas of agreement. Right. right. And so one example was a woman who was uh, very upset about public funding of abortion. I'll stop there. An example that maybe you're going to open up is a woman that was very upset about public funding of abortion. Right. But when she talked, she was upset because um, uh, her husband, uh, I guess the sperm count was low. So the government would not fund uh, in vitro fertilization. I'll stop there. So as she shared more, she shared about um, whether it was the husband's sperm count or not. As she shared, she said that the government wouldn't wouldn't pay for in vitro fertilization. Right. And so I realized that, you know, she said, well, if they paid for, you know, if they paid for fertilization, I'd be fine with public uh, funding of abortion. And then I realized we both agreed that um, there should be public health care. Mm. So she was on board, could agree, like if they paid for um, for fertilization, then okay for abortion. But really, the common denominator that you arrived at is, yes, we need public health care. Right. Um, and um, and uh, other people, um, I also uh, found that um, the people, whether they're on the left or the right, and sometimes there's a conflict, the people who are in the minority tend to be a lot more polite than the people in the majority. And I'll stop there. Uh, so the essence is that you found that people in the minority tend to be a lot more polite than the people in the majority. Thank you, Terry. I feel fully heard. Thank you, Bill. So, let's see, Sayantan, willing to be my listener? I think I'm doing it right. Be anonymous. Thank you. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of all jumbled around in what I might want to say. Um, and it has to do with belonging and anxiety related to belonging. I hear you say you're kind of all jumbled around in what you want to say. And it has to do with belonging and anxiety around belonging. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it was so true. And um, so the topic about political and social divide is not something I resonate with. I consider myself pretty apolitical. And um, for the last several years, I've been in intensive trauma healing. I uh, PTSD survivor. And so that's sort of where my focus is. And I can feel very anxious when there's a more global focus that I can't step into. So I hear you saying the topic around political divide is not something you resonate with. Um, You consider yourself apolitical. And uh, you are a a PTSD survivor and you've been in intense trauma healing for the last couple of years. 
and so you feel very anxious stepping into uh, a place where there is a more global um, outlook on things or approach to things i'm not sure if i got that correctly please uh, correct me okay. yeah yeah thank you and uh, you know just realizing hoping to develop a healthy relationship with my own anxiety because it really cripples me from my capacities and from developing and exercising skill. Uh, so I hear you say just developing a healthy relationship with your anxiety uh, because it uh, affects your ability to, you know, otherwise uh, use your capacities and, um, you know, uh, fully like uh, be utilizing your skills, if I heard that correctly. Yeah, thank you for hearing me. It's pretty vulnerable stuff to share and time is up. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, finish the reflection, Santa. Uh, I'll just keep it short. I just want to um, thank you uh, for uh, thanking me and also like uh, coming and sharing a place of vulnerability is never easy. So I just wanted to acknowledge uh, this immense strength that you've shown and uh, the, the feeling you bring to this circle. And uh, yeah, I feel honored to be in this circle with you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Hearing you say that expressing vulnerability is never easy, it really mean something to me. Thank you. Okay, great. All right, Leslie, uh, how did it feel? Yeah, um, well, you know, a little bit of a surprise start again <laughs> there, but um, I think the one of the biggest takeaways, even though it was, Linda, I want to thank you, because even though it was like the one, you know, sort of challenge, it was really what I was looking for. It was felt very realistic to me. And, and it, reflecting bill after you said something in, in your speaking turn about um sort of diffusing by reflecting like you know a situation i was looking at that and thinking there's a part of me sort of sensing that she was just needing to have the say and then you know on we go and so limiting like sort of my input on it but i was left wondering after listening to you if maybe like it would have been helpful to just reflect something and then ask her to carry on with with her speaking turn so i i'm, I'm not sure which would be you know the better way to go with that but okay yeah i have a comment on that but that's all. But, but finish up okay sure um and then I feel so um, a very analog person. I don't have like a lot of digital <laughs> tech. Keeping time is a really tricky thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, because I remember in past circles, is it for the person facilitating, like, could you ask, is there somebody who would be willing to keep time for us during the, is that, is that? Yes. Yeah, you could, you can do that. It's generally good if someone has um, an experience with the empathy circle, you know, just to, you know, to do that. Because uh, there is a, when I'm keeping time, I'm balancing two things. One, I want to, like like Lou talked about earlier, he might give a person a little bit more time. Like when uh, Linda was interrupting me in Sayantan's facilitation, I might give me a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. um, and the other way is to make sure that you don't give someone so much time that not everybody doesn't have a chance. So mm -hmm. that's what we I call kind of the art of facilitating. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, the, I would throw in to say that um, it helps to know the importance or the benefit of keeping time when you're asking somebody to keep time. That you, it's important, and this is the reason why we want to give everybody equal, you know, opportunity to speak. But it just may just flake it off and go, hmm, okay, so I missed a minute. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then, yeah. Other than that, I felt. Um, I'm not sure if my intro is missing something. It kind of felt like it might <laughs> might have been, um, but yeah, I, that's that's pretty much the self reflect, I guess. Okay, all right. Uh, so, Sayantan, Turiya, and Linda.
I uh, really uh, loved the way you responded. I don't know whether it's like a very appropriate way, but it made me feel like the circle's flow wasn't broken. Like it, it didn't feel like there was like somebody trying to hammer us into a circle. Like I, I love the hands off approach and uh, I've actually been part of circles where such things have happened and um, uh, it gets worse when the facilitator usually tries to intervene in my experience. Like that's what happened. So it, it's like really nice where it felt like it was natural. Like Linda expressed her views and Bill reflected. So that was like so wonderful because like I was constantly thinking in my mind when you will, uh, you know, step in or something like that. But then I realized not stepping in was actually the much better intervention. The other thing I really loved, and I have a question also around it, is the fact that you really ensured the flow with your uh, rhythm of speech. Like you had a like smooth flowing speech that had a constant tempo throughout. It made me feel like I wanted to join that tempo and go on in the same wavelength. Um, so that kind of, you know, it was like very inviting to share in that. I really love that. I was just worried, like I've been trying to work on slowing down my speech to improve my enunciation so that everyone can understand. And I'm wondering where to draw the balance because like if I slow down, sometimes I feel like I'm not ensuring a smooth flow of words. I'm not being natural. Like this is probably more natural for me. But when I explain things, I try to go slow like this. And I'm wondering if this is too slow. So that's like something I'm worried about, but I really love the experience with you, but I'm probably somewhat very conversant with English. So I don't know if I speak for others. And uh, yeah, I really love uh, the way you timed it also. And I really love the paper thing. Like holding the phone is one thing, but the paper thing is far more indicative. So probably I'll do that. Like next time, maybe I'll try to prepare something like that. Uh, and yeah, this felt... Uh, as you can realize by some of the ways that we were sharing, it felt like a very emotional circle. Even though we did one round, we were like completely immersed. So uh, we were sharing everything. And uh, yeah, it was really good. Thank you. Thank you. Surya? You know, I don't have much to say, except that um, I did write down in your intro that you identified there are three roles. And that was immediate clarity for me. It was immediate orientation. So, and the rest of it, I, I felt comfortable with. I, that was mostly what I had. Yeah, I feel that you have a really gentle and warm holding of the circle, and that feels really good. I also want to reinforce what Taria said about the three roles. When you hear the three roles, then I just... It, it, it relieves pressure on me because then I, oh, I just have to remember three things. <laughs> now these things, boom, boom, boom. And then if I've got it, I feel that you got it. But you also act, ask questions. If anybody has any questions, you went over that. Um, you also, your addressing the time limit was good. And, you know, and also I liked your active listener uh, explanation very much. Um, and then to talk about your, quote unquote, non-intervention of Linda, uh, I thought you made the right, you know, right decision. You can make the right or wrong decision, it's fine, again. Um, but um, you, uh, you made the right decision there because I started to reflect and Linda waved me off. And so, so therefore, Linda didn't want to be reflected. She wanted to get that out. So in that case, it, uh, reflecting would have been escalatory, not de-escalation. Um, so I thought that was a good choice. And then you can always intervene later if you want, but really, you know, well held and 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 very thoughtful and warm. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Linda, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, and because they're different. What, were you through? Finish, Bill. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, different facilitators handle different situations different ways. I. You know, I was expecting for you to say, uh, acknowledge, I hear you, Linda, but when it's your turn to speak, you can speak on something that's real to you. You don't have to speak on because even though I'm saying it to you, everybody in the group is hearing it. And then when I blew Bill off, you know, I don't know if that would have pissed the other person off or not, but 
I would have just said, you know what, I hear you, Linda, and when it's your turn to speak, you, you don't have to speak on politics. Mm. And that's, like I say, different people, you just have to, mm -hmm. you know, fill the room. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I want to move on because uh, this has always yeah. happened. You have a little bit less time than the other people, Terry, and this is my learning uh, kind of curve. I want to acknowledge that uh, you have shared that uh, it's been a trying moment, and I just want to remind you, you don't need to have any uh, challenges if you don't wish to. Even though Linda, you are so good at it, <laughs> I am going to decline challenges because being okay, here yeah. in my seat is a challenge enough today. <laughs> I will not okay. challenge you. Okay. Thank you. So, and I also want to acknowledge that we have a little, you know, because of the short, not everybody gets to speak. And um, so that's a little bit of difference with a, with an empathy circle. Usually it's enough. And, and uh, when Leslie mentioned that, it did acknowledge that um, it's not quite real time. You know, it's right, <laughs> a real a circle experience, I think. So uh, trying to move on. Uh, Taria, do you feel confident doing the how-to and then doing a short uh, facilitation? No, you do not. <laughs> do I need to feel confident in order to no, do it? No, you don't have to need to feel confident, but um, do you feel that you'll attempt it then? I I'm willing. Really? feel like we're your safety net. We will get you. You will not fall. Yeah. <laughs> right. You will not fall. And, and to, you. if for some reason you feel stuck or something, just give yeah. the uh, timeout sign and let us know what's happening for you internally and then we can discuss it at that time. That's a great idea. Well, thank you all. You know, it's it's really meaningful to be able to have a corrective experience. And, you know, though I feel like I have ice water running in my prefrontal cortex instead of blood that would help me. We're gonna go ahead with it because okay. I, I heard your encouragement and your support, all of you. So I really want to welcome each of us here to the circle together. It's really a privilege and honor to see what can happen in a circle of, of humanity when we can hear each other and speak our truth. So here's a chance we can do that. And I'll give you a little overview of how the circle is structured. And please know that the structure of the circle is, is particular for this circle to support safety for each of us, equality in sharing and hearing, and so that we're mutually creating this container, the circle together. And I might pause and ask if there are questions as I go along. Okay, so. How the circle will proceed is that there are three roles. It's all we need to remember. There will be an active speaker at any one time, a speaker, and an active listener. And then the rest of us will be silent listeners. Now the speaker can speak in our allotted time for each speaker and listener is three minutes today. And we'll move around the circle in those three minute segments. The speaker can speak an idea or two, and then the active listener will reflect what they've heard. Now that reflection is gonna be as accurate and verbatim as they have heard the speaker without any need to put in interpretation or evaluation or judgment but mostly just to express what they've heard so the speaker can really know they've been heard. And then at the end of that three minutes, I'll lift up my timer and hope for acknowledgement from you all that you've seen it. And then um, the speaker can acknowledge that they have felt fully heard, if that's the truth. And then the speaker will then move on and let's see. So the listener from that first partnership will then choose their next speaker. And then we'll continue around the circle like that. 
And I'm wondering, I'm feeling a little tongue tied today, and I'm wondering if there's anyone who would be willing and feel able to reflect a little bit of what you've just heard in terms of the instructions for speaker and active listener. Or I will do my best to repeat it. You gave, you said we will have three minutes, it's three roles, active speaker, active listener, and then the silent listener. The speaker will have three minutes. Uh, everybody will go around where each person will have a turn. Uh, you will hold up your clock. Uh, when our time is up, when the three minutes is up. Um, I'm not sure what the act, oh, and the active listener would reflect. Yeah. And then when they finish, the speaker becomes the listener. Speaker becomes the listener and- the Yeah, and the listener becomes the speaker, I'm sorry. The listener becomes the speaker. Listener becomes the speaker. And they choose their listener. Yes. Thank you. I wow. I, that. Yeah. I think you got it great. <laughs> you got it better than I said it. So thank you very much. All right. Well, um, so I am going, and did anyone have anything to add or any other questions before we actually just move into the circle? Okay. Um, and today the topic is your choice of how to deal with difficult emotions or whatever is springing alive in you. And I will start as the first listener and I will ask Bill if he would, let's see, am I getting this right? I'm gonna mm -hmm. listen first. This is where I have ice water in my brain. You're good, you're good. And let's see, Bill, you and I have been partnered a couple of times, so I will choose Linda to be my speaker, if she's willing. Okay, um, yeah. And I need to, okay. I just need to pause for one second while I set my timer. And, okie doke. Okay, how I deal with difficult situations is in general, I, um, I can feel my blood pressure going up, my adrenaline, I can feel my adrenaline spiking. And so I try the deep breathing, um, I'm uh, praying <laughs> that God control my emotions. And I, I talk to myself, I tell myself to, you know, calm down. So when you have difficult emotions come up, you can really feel it. You can feel your blood pressure go up. You can feel the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. and you pray and you talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I take deep breaths. And you take deep breaths. Yes. Um, because I, um, I, I've seen people who get angry and cannot control their emotions. And um, it can be very hurtful and it can be, um, it can be dangerous. So I try to you know, control, I may be angry, but I want to control my response, my, you know, to, to whatever it is that's ticking me off. Mm. Yeah, it's important to you because you've seen when people are angry, they can be very hurtful and you really have a different value than that. Yeah. You really, yeah. Hurtful and dangerous. They can, you know, sometimes words can um, feel like a bullet. And sometimes people say things to you in anger and then they come back and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I was angry, I didn't mean it. Well, <laughs> the bullet has already hit your heart. So they yeah. can't take that back. And I usually tell people, no, whatever was in you was gonna come out anyway. It just did this time. So I don't really have too much of a, I don't too much excuse people for saying hurtful things to me because I feel like it was just there. You just needed something to trigger it. Mm -hmm. So you're reiterating that anger can be dangerous as well. And words can be like bullets. And you've had that happen to you. And people come to you later and they say they're sorry, but 
yeah, the sense that it was under the surface anyway. It was, yeah. It didn't come out. Yeah. And so, um, and whatever they be saying to me may be true. <laughs> Maybe I am acting out of up. Uh, but anyway, I try to, that's re another reason I try to control my emotions because I know that's not a, uh, to respond in anger is not a, a, a mature thing to do. Mm. And our, our time is up, but just a brief reflection, like you really do try and control your emotions. You, you don't want to put pain in the world and it's not a mature thing to do. You want to really be able to control yourself. Yeah. I feel fully hurt. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Mm. So now, Linda, you would be the speaker and choose your listener. The listener becomes the speaker. Oh, God, I'm getting mixed up. Okay, and I was... Sorry, yeah. I, I'm, the, I'm the speaker now? Yeah, you were the first listener, and then this the listener becomes the active listener becomes the speaker. Don't worry about well, thank it. You. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I always get that. If yeah. this, I, I can't work for me. Oh. <gasps> thank you. It, it's a dyslexia I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I am the speaker now, and I'm setting yes. my. And oh, I need to. I need to pick a listener, right? Correct. Okay. Well, Bill, would you be willing to listen to me? Sure, I'd be happy to. Hey, timer set. Um, well, I have this I have this energy that's kind of expanding as hopeful curiosity. Like I feel like this, I am taking advantage of this experience together so that I can just be my imperfect self and see if I can actually survive. Yeah, so um, I get a sense of, uh, an ex you're feeling it sort of expansive, expansive, and I kind of read or infer into that, um, that you're imperfect, but you also feel that uh, you're expanding so that you can deal with any imperfections that come along. No big deal. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm. I think I think you guys are all helping me have a more expansive definition of belonging. Like I can belong even if I'm imperfect and screwing up, which is so different than the very narrow place that I have lived from. So your experience in the circle and, you know, generally the group is that um, because of the support, um, you don't, you feel you don't have to be perfect in order to be part of the community. Um, you're in. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's an opportunity to test that out, to really experience humanity differently that I can belong, or at least I can, you can, with your support and your reflections, I can belong in myself. And that's the first place to belong. Yeah, so you're addressing any insecurities, personal insecurities, and you're saying that, you know, the acceptance in this group helps you overcome those and not only belong in the group, but also accept yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that I won't be reflecting on this experience um, into my evening today. And uh, harvesting what I'm learning, what my whole nervous system is learning. Yeah, so there's a, there are a lot of things, a, a lot of experiences and feelings that you're, you're going through right now and that you will be processing this into the evening. Um, to try to sort it out. Yeah, and how much I've limited my participation in life because I'm too afraid that I'll be imperfect and won't be able to belong. Yeah, and so this is coming up with an old belief you have that if you're you know, imperfect or wrong, you can't be a part of things, and this is giving you um, a different experience. Thank you very much, yes.
Ah, ah, ah. Okay, now if I have this right, you are just a listener. You get to be the speaker and choose your listener. Right. All right, I'll talk to Sayantan. Hi, man. It's an honor to listen. Okay. Um, so different, um, you know, difficult feelings, uh, different emotions. Um, so, um, uh, so I, I'll kind of uh, respond to what uh, Linda's sort of role play criticism of saying that the kids ran away with me. <laughs> when, <coughs> excuse me, in charge of the the classroom. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. Um, so I'm going to be, uh, yeah, so I'll talk about different difficult things and also challenges to, um, you know, to a process. Um, what, what I heard you say is uh, different difficult emotions, different challenges, and mm -hmm. we'll be responding to what Linda uh, kind of said uh, about like children running away from classes and uh, I, I lost your bit there when you coughed and uh, you mentioned that you'll be talking about challenges with process. Yeah, uh, so Linda in her role play um, was, was saying that, you know, we're too kind to kids or we, we're not taking a firm enough hand. So that's what I wanted to address. Right. So I hear you saying that Linda said in her role play that there are two kinds of kids and they're not taking a firm enough hand. And that's right. what you're doing with this. And, and uh, many of my students were violent and acting out all over the place. And uh, if, if you didn't take a firm hand, um, then uh, you're right. Then you could, people would get hurt. I'll stop there. And uh, I hear you say that uh, many of your students were violent and acting out their acting out uh, their emotions, maybe. And um, if you didn't take a firm hand, then I hear you say that people would have gotten hurt. Right. So, um, so I totally stand by what I said as far as not, you know, naming. We didn't punish. And, the, and what people don't understand, and I hope pa if any parent sees this, there's a difference between punishing and setting limits. I'll stop there. So you stand by what you said, and you, uh, like you didn't punish people, and you, you, you kind of want parents to know that there's a difference between punishing people and setting limits. And uh, So when you punish, you just label a person, and the child feels labeled, shamed. And what do I do with that? I'm bad. Uh, all right, I'm bad. So that's what they are. I'll stop there. Right. I hear you say that when you label someone, there's not much they can do with it. They just know that they're labeled and then they feel that what do they do with it? There's nothing they can do. With it. And it makes them feel bad about themselves, if I heard you correctly. Right. But when you set limits, you reinforce their essential worth as a human being. Um, and then you give you you name the behavior, which was not like throwing a chair, not a good idea. Um, and then you give them an alternative, such as you might be upset about something. And instead of throwing the chair, if you asked me to uh, listen to you, I'd be happy to listen to you. I'll stop there. And we're at time. Oh, I saw that. So, and when you set limits, um, you give alternative to people. Like, uh, I, I heard you say that, like, when you set limits, setting limits looks like if you stop somebody from throwing a chair, you give them some alternative of uh, what to do, like, instead, how they can express instead. And I, I know, uh, to me, I said it was time, but, like, I just want, to know whether you feel completely heard or if there's any clarification you want to I, I do. And I just want to recognize that our time is short. So uh, we'll have to, uh, and I apologize, Leslie got left out. So I just want to acknowledge that. I know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. So uh, Taria, how is it for you? Um, not so bad. <laughs> I, I, 
I, I really do have this dyslexia and I'm so glad Linda you were, <laughs> jumped in and said you too about like when I'm when I'm more calm I don't think I struggle with it as much I don't think I struggled with it last week um, but I just don't have the capacity today to keep it straight about speaker and listener and who does what when so um, that that's my my biggest gulp yeah. but Again, I really appreciate the risk of seeing you guys is all safe. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I have to say, um, Edwin, I don't know how many times he corrected me when I first started because I couldn't get the listener and the speaker. So I, even now I get confused. If somebody, are you sure? Then I start thinking and I'm like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> so, but, you know, listen and then speak. Listen and then speak. That's how I have to when I do that, that's for me. Thank you. I, I think you did uh, a real good job. You have a real calm voice. It's real, you know, cause I'm, I'm imagining somebody in the circle that came in agitated and just ready to, you know, burn the place down. Listening to you, you can't help but just kind of take it down a notch. You're like, okay, all right. <laughs> so you did it, you did good. Thank you. That's very meaningful for me to hear. Um, I, I felt like when you were giving the introduction, similar to, I guess, what Linda is saying, like you're, you seem so embodied and yeah. so present. And there, it's just the communication, like when you were giving the, you know, the instruction, it just felt really grounded in that, like very clear, very connected. Mm -hmm. And I loved in particular, you started with um, an invitation and like the purpose, yeah. you know, like yeah. just what can happen in an empathy circle. And for me, that was just such a draw, yeah. like coming in. It wasn't just like, so here are the rules and this is what we yeah. do. It was like, it was really an inspiring invitation. Oh, I'm so glad. I worry about being too flowery. No. Uh, I, the part of this group and me, like, I could feel that I closely belong with you. Like, so uh, I don't know whether you shared that, but I felt like I belonged with you and <laughs> it really resonated with me. So I, I love that intimacy that you brought in. Yeah. Um, uh, and there are some words which stood out for me. Like, actually, I was using each of us each time because last time you had said uh, about listeners holding a circle, the silent listeners holding a circle. And that's where I got it from and I used it today. So um, <laughs> I could see you use it again. And that like really rung for me. Also, like something I plan to borrow from you in the future is you use something where you said circle of humanity. And I love that phrase. So I'll try to bring it because like the purpose was very clear, like Leslie said. I, I love yeah. that clarifying invitation. Also, I, I thought you did wonderfully where you emphasized the safety aspect initially. Like that really made it out for me because I'm with a group of strangers. I was just imagining myself with a group mm -hmm. of strangers. And I thought that was uh, wonderful to support safety for each of us. You use this phrase, you use mutually creating the circle together. So the word mutually stood out for me. A <clears throat> couple of things. I know it was a difficult situation today, but like uh, uh, last time we had discussed, you could clarify maybe that your computer screen might be a little different place or a phone might be a different place. So you can just mention that sometimes even when you're looking at us, it's not going to be apparent because on the screen it might appear like you're looking elsewhere. So this was something Bill had mentioned last week. So that was something that stood out. Also, I realized that eye contact is important for me. I know it can be difficult or intimidating at times, but if you could sometimes, you know, look at me when talking on the screen or look at the screen, uh, that's going to be really important for me. Uh, another takeaway, which none of us did, but I think in the future, like I've seen some people do it and I think it might be useful is uh, Edwin's slides where he mentioned those uh, steps. Like uh, I just realized that if I can't follow words very easily, if I have it visually on the screen, it uh, really rings very easily for me. So the, the like Will said, the three things that you clarified about the three roles, if that's just visible on the screen for me as a presentation, it might really help me. Like if I'm not clear with the words, that's my feedback. Thank you so much uh, for this very intimate and uh, very clearly purposeful circle. Thank you. Oh, thank you.
All right, Tyria. So first of all, I want to acknowledge your bravery. Um, everyone who's going to try to change the world will have to take that leap at some point. And for you, that was what you did today. And so I yeah. want to acknowledge that. Um, and uh, so good topic, um, you know, good asking uh, for reflection. Uh, you know, I, I hear like your language, it was, it, it was fine. And for Leslie that drew people in, just be aware of like, uh, yeah, be aware of the flowery language just for people who for English is a second language or other people, um, they might get lost in that a little bit. And that's just reading the room. It's right one time it's, you know, so who, yeah. You know. Um, yeah it was a, and I, what I really liked is that you chose me as sort of like a, the first speaker and then you went off you chose Linda instead, but you said, Bill, I've I had you. So that was really important because when people come in, sometimes, you know, they, we have something called free floating anxiety. So if you had chosen me and then just got off, oh, did I do something wrong or something? You know, those things happen. It's not logical uh, and <laughs> it would work itself out. But by framing it and saying, oh, I've talked to you a lot, then that kind of let me calm down there. So that was a really good um intervention there um and then what i also saw you do is you let the structure support you uh of the empathy circle that you really started i noticed that you really didn't have to it, you, it's not all on your shoulders there's a structure and then you, if you let that and use that structure to support you um it it works out very well so again warm inviting um i'd be very you know happy so okay um thank you i learned a lot and i hope i continue to learn sure i'm sure you will okay and i'm going to close the room and then everybody's going to be coming back in here going to beam us up or down <laughs> right were we actually in a different room or were we just in the main room no, no you were no. in the main room so you'll stay in the main room Are the others in their own rooms? Like, is there a timer? Closing every, you know, people have, takes a little bit of time. Um, all right. Uh, 10 seconds and everybody should be back in. Is it really hot in San Francisco? Uh, it's hotter. And it's cool here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We're all back. Okay. Great. And let's see. I'm turn it over to Larry. There you are. Uh, Larry for the debrief. Thanks. All right. So we'd like to just go around our circle here and get a, a brief wrap up. How was this experience? Any learning? Any insights? What was it like for you? We'll just Go around the screen calling everyone. If I overlook anyone because sometimes the screen move around, let me know if I did. I'll start with Katie. How was your, your experience today? Yeah, it was um, it was a good experience. Uh, it was with uh, a couple of new people that I hadn't been in a circle with before, which was, um, was nice. And it was um, a bit of a reminder for me that you're not necessarily going to get better every time you you host a, a circle you might have uh, a step forward and a step back um, today I felt more nervous and struggled a little bit more with the intro than last week but um really supportive space where I definitely felt like that was okay thank you thank you Katie and Issa would you share please was that Lisa Issa sorry Yes, for me, it was a very uh, rich learning experience, um, a sense of 
co-holding and holding, mindfulness, very pleasant. Thank you. Thank you, Isa. And Sally, are you there? Can you share, please? And Sally may have stepped away for a moment. Can we go to Alex? Would you share, please? Sure. Um, that was a really good experience, a truly a learning experience for me. It was my first time um, even trial facilitating. Um, and I'm really grateful for this, this experience. Um, I learned come come better prepared, but I'll I'll be prepared next time, so I'll know that. <laughs> um, I don't know who to pass to, so over to the next person. Thank you, Alex. Um, Lisa, would you share, please? Yes, um, I enjoyed the experience. I um, find that our topics kind of tied in well with each other. And one of the pieces is like mindfulness, probably use it, utilizing some mindfulness prior to me sharing what a facilitator does could be helpful in that process for me. Thank you, Lisa. And Sally, would you share please? Sure. Um, we had a great group. I was just really excited at, um, yeah, the effectiveness of the facilitators and um, their growth. And also, um, well, I just really like um, Marley's um, topic on inclusion or exclusion and the idea she had about you, um, having good topics. Thank you, Sally. Marley, would you share, please? Sure. Um, yeah, I thought that today was a great learning experience. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed like, yeah, getting into a more vulnerable area and seeing this um, structure work in that zone. So that was a, a great opportunity. Thank you, Marley. Mike, would you share, please? Mike, can you hear us all right? Would you share, please? Muted. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we had a wonderful group, uh, all of whom I'd been with before in one place or another. And uh, But we got to a depth today that I thought was uh, much deeper than we'd ever gotten before. And uh, I look forward to our next uh, uh, session. Thank you, Mike. Marisa, would you share, please? Sure. Um, yeah, I think that this was a really um, great learning experience for me. I was very grateful for um, the other two learning, um, the folks that were also practicing facilitating for taking on challenges. Um, I thought they both did a great job with the challenges. Um, and it also helped me to realize that learning this process um, and having a child at home today who refused to go to school was a challenge enough for me. Um, and so that I, I could extend compassion to myself and say, you don't have to do the challenge this time. Just just do, just do get through it. And um, that, that was really great. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Marisa. And Daniel, would you share, please? Yeah, I really appreciate it today that we started getting into challenges. <laughs> and a challenge I feel I face, because I'm thinking of a group I'll be hosting a circle with on how to deal uh, with people who have a lot of disagreements. So this um, gave me a little practice with that and um, came up, uh, somebody came up with a new idea of, well, listen first. Get, uh, push the theme of uh, it's okay to disagree, but got to listen first. Thank you, Daniel. And Jen, would you share, please? Yeah. Um, it was a really great experience. Um, yeah. I, I, the, the other facilitator or the other um, participants were really 
it was fun to learn from their process. Um, yeah, and I really liked that we each got to choose our own topics. Um, they wove really well together. We talked about presence and community and transformation. And so, yeah, it was just a really rich conversation. Um, yeah, dealing with challenges is, you know, I, I felt pretty well, um, like I handled it well. So uh, that's good. That feels like a good, you know, thing that I can take forward. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jen. And Joyce, would you share, please? Whoops, you're on mute, Joyce. Okay, uh, I was quite worried about challenges. I told my walking buddy this morning that, oh dear, I have to do this and uh, <laughs> calm down a little bit. And uh, so I related to Marley's comment about be accepting vulnerability. And I also uh, related to Marisa when she said, you know, we have the right to refuse, we can choose. And uh, I chose to accept, but that was my right. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. <clears throat> Gabby, would you share, please? Yeah, it was a wonderful experience of a lot of challenges, uh, mm -hmm. being a facilitator, with receiving challenges and also being a participant creating challenges <laughs> so so it was wonderful learning from you and yeah looking forward for the um another meeting and another challenge yeah thank you all thank you gabby and john would you share please yeah we had a a great session and one of the things that I appreciate about it was that we we saw uh, examples of how the facilitator could be too involved or not involved enough or in a, and I think deciding on when and how to intervene is 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 part of the practice so I was glad we got to kind of work those muscles today. Thank you John. And Turia, would you share, please? Muted. Oh, hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. I have microphone problems from time to time. Um, yes, I'm. I'm still just wonderstruck and processing a lot of uh, gratitude and and what do I get to believe now about being safe in human community. Um, my borders have been expanded and my heart has been deepened. So I'm very grateful. Thank you, Turiya. Leslie, would you share, please? Yes, um, I, um, I'm appreciating um, with the challenges, the encouragement from both Bill and Lou, the support to um, be particular and, and ask for not just the degree, but like the type of challenge. And thank you to Linda. Um, she delivered what was a very realistic, um, it didn't need to be constant. It was actually a single one, but it really um, gave me a lot to work with. So really grateful, thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Sayan Tan, would you share, please? Uh, yeah. Uh, I get very conscious when I'm on camera or recorded. So <laughs> I, this was the second week I was in the main room. So it causes me some anxiety to be there repeatedly. I understand I might be from a different culture or maybe like, you know, something different, but like it, it, it made me a little conscious. And uh, so it was like an interesting challenge constantly at the back of my mind and overcoming it. So that was like a, a theme that was there uh, for me. Um, and uh, I really appreciated, like uh, Leslie was mentioning, like Bill and Linda both gave us very realistic challenges and feedback. I had asked for the most hardest uh, thing. And uh, um, yeah, it, like it wasn't <laughs> feeling that hard, like... Uh, but in hindsight, when I reflect back, like I realize that there's so much material I have to think about based on what they've said. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was uh, very useful. And it, it, it really felt like, um, like the facilitation group is also this becoming this place of belonging. I don't know. I've, I've started growing familiar with people. 
I don't know whether that's bad or good, but like um, there there is this fellowship that I guess develops, and um, I don't know why I've never been in a session or a buddy talk with Lou, but like somehow I was wondering what challenges would Lou give if I asked for the hardest, and that was something <laughs> that I that was on the back of my mind, and I was wondering about that. And uh, yeah, it was so nice seeing Alex back and trying this for the first time. So um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm a little overwhelmed, but I really appreciate uh, um, this. Uh, I, I don't want to call it just an experience because I think there's so much more to it and I'll probably come up with better words later. So thank you. Thank you, say in time. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I've gotten all the participants. If not, please raise your hand. I want to go now to the facilitators, if that's all right. And if I, if I missed anyone, I certainly don't intend to miss anyone. Absolutely not. But um, I'm going to go back to the screen and look for the ECFs. And Altonia, would you share, please? Altonia. Sorry, I was muted. Um, we had a really good... Um, a really good session. Um, I think the, um, um, I think it was a lot of learning opportunities um, within the session. They handled their challenges really well. Um, they handled the how-to um, pretty well. Just some minor adjustments that need, they need to be made with that. But um, we had to love the topic that um, that Marty came up with. So they really got everyone engaged on the. Um, on a deeper level. So yeah, it was good. Thank you all, Tanya. And Celine, would you share, please? Yes, something that nobody from my group has yet mentioned is we had some dancing today. So we got <laughs> to practice dancing as a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. I agree that there was a, a lot of learning and also a lot of collaboration. I, I really enjoyed the sense of everybody supporting each other in their learning. So, thank you, Selena. Very sweet. Thank you, Selena. And Dwayne, would you share, please? Sure. Um, <clears throat> it was a little bit challenging for me to start because um, I had a, a phone call that I had to deal with that was a business related issue right before I started. Mm -hmm. And usually I, you know, come into this, I look at the script ahead of time and I'm prepared and being mindful and it really made it really challenging for me. Um, but I was able to get into things and um, I was thankful. I enjoyed the experience with Jen and Daniel and Alex. And, you know, for me, I'm always a student first and a teacher second. So I want to thank them for providing me with the learning opportunity. And I really enjoyed learning from them today. And I uh, thought the process went really well. So thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. And Lou, would you share, please? Uh, sure, yeah, we had a great session today. Uh, a lot of, lot of inventiveness and creativity and a lot of discussion. We got a chance to see how folks react when you have someone in the circle who you know, isn't listening very well or doesn't understand their role uh, in the process or, um, you know, or just comes in with a very different opinion than everyone else, a very different kind of worldview than everyone else. How, what, how, how do you respond to that kind of person? People had a chance to experiment with that. And we actually had a fair amount of what I'd call integrative feedback where I'm call, I call a timeout and we say, well, what just happened? Uh, you know, and how and talk about how the person responded. And I do think that when you're a facilitator, you know, the first thing is to recognize that something's happening that's out of out of step with the circle. And then the second thing is deciding whether to intervene or not. Is it time to intervene or do I let this work yeah. itself out? And then the third thing is, if I decide to intervene, you know, what, how do I, what, what am I going to say? What do I do? So, um, yeah, it was a great example, a lot of learning around those things. Thank you, Lou. And Linda, would you share, please? Yeah, it, again, a good group, a very good group. And 
I have to say, you know, participating in these circles and also facilitating, which I had the, the privilege of being with Bill today and the joy of being the one that came up with the challenges. So I had to really think, you know, think about what to do and when to do it. But um, I, one thing came to me while we were going through our circle is that uh, for me, I'm growing in a lot of different ways, not just in uh, learning to listen better, uh, and learning to be more selective with the words I use, but also just in, in terms of engaging with people. So um, this is a good experience for me. Thank you, Linda. And why I resonate with that growth, growth. Yeah. Amazing. I'm still growing after all these years. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. Wow. It's what I'm so grateful that there's, there's still this opportunity to grow yeah. and listen. I'm so grateful for this. And we had an awesome circle. It was so deep and so in the heart. I love these empathy circles. I'm going to keep coming back. Even if you get bored with seeing me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to keep coming back. Okay, so Bill, how was your experience? I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Well, my experience was always very, I'm, I am so impressed. Um, I'm sort of inundated by the media and things like that. And uh, I have a hard time keeping my head above water. Um, and, um, and particularly someone in the group expressed their vulnerabilities. And what I got to see, which is so precious to me, and what I see with every participant, is that initial, you know, trepidation when you're trying to go beyond whatever mm -hmm. it was. And it's, you know, and that's what we're going to have to do as, as a race to, to fix this. Each person's going to have to go a bit beyond where they were. And it takes courage and bravery. And I'm just so um, impressed. And every time I participate, it, it kind of gives me like a, an inoculation or a vaccine for all the crap that I see in the other world. So I'm really appreciative of each one of you. Thank you, Larry. And um, I think that, is that everyone? Okay, because then Antonia will do the close. Okie dokie. Since all the rest of you have missed my funky dance move, I will demonstrate right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> it sounds like everyone really um, enjoyed their their breakout um, groups and learned a lot and um, had opportunities to grow a bit um, and learn from each other. So, are there any other final comments that any of the trainers have? I'd just like to say a reminder that uh, every other Friday, I do a Empathy Circle facilitator support group where people can come and extend their learning and bring issues they want to talk about or role play challenges. Uh, uh, we do a wide variety of things in that in that space. It's, it's 9 a.m. on Friday morning Pacific time. And I do it in my Zoom room, not in Edwin's. Um, so I just want to remind the people of that. And, and it is happening this Friday. And I'll post the link. Thank you, Lou. Any other trainers um, have any um, final comments? I'd, I'd like to say that um, I had this image come to me this morning in an earlier meeting. Imagine a child on a bicycle with training wheels and that little bicycle helmet on. You know, would you want to laugh at the child because they have training wheels and they're learning? Or would you want to encourage the child? And that image is just beautiful to me that we're all encouraging each other to learn and grow, even at my age. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you all. Yeah, and I'll just say that I, I have a Thursday um, 10 a.m. meeting um, in this room. Um, and that's my information. If you can't make it, but you wanna talk about empathy in schools, you know, get in touch with me. Thanks. That's it. Anyone else? Any other trainer? I have a quick question for either um, Marisa or John. We had an extra special guest here today, and I just wanted to know if you could share their name with us. Come here. They want us you to come say hello. Hi. What's your name? Hello. Yeah. Hi. I just got out of school today. Good. Good. 
<laughs> he was he was very um, enthralled by being able to see me and Daddy on different screens. So he was yeah. going back and forth to, <laughs> to the rooms. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So Altonia, I have one thing, and that is, um, I am interested in empathy circles in Spanish. So um, if anybody has interest in that direction, you can contact me. I'll put my, my email in the chat. That's it. Any, any other trainers? Final comments? Okay, um, um, Edwin does have um, an empathy circle uh, uh, schedule. I put that link in the chat already. Um, he also um, has a, a empathy circle for the campaign, for his campaign, and um, we'd love to have you guys be a part of that and to volunteer for that. Um, so let's give you what we did this session. We practice introdu introducing the empathy circle process with instructions on how to participate in an empathy circle. Um, everyone who wanted to practice facilitating did a um, short empathy circle and did some challenges which sounds like you guys knocked out of the park. Um, and we debriefed the experience at the end of the circle process. So next week is session four. We'll practice again um, the empathy circle and the how to, and um, you can ask for challenges uh, next week as well um, to get some more practice. Um, so we'll send out emails with um, reminding you to fill out the feedback survey, which is also the link is in the chat, and um, we'll send out the emails with your buddy. Um, with your buddy, with the buddy list, we'll send that out. Please do not wait for your buddy to reach out to you. Take the initiative to, you know, to, to contact your buddy, to set up a time uh, for you to have a buddy call. And if you can, try to facilitate a circle or participate in one. You know, do one with the kids, do one with your spouse, um, do one with your coworkers, um, do one with your boss. It might make <laughs> it be nicer. <laughs> But um, from, can you guys can just post a feeling in the chat about um, your experience today. That would be great. And I'll try to read some of them off. Um, I'm on my phone, so it might take me a little longer to do that. Mine for appreciation growth. That's all we got. Learning, flexibility, relax, compassion, peace. Confidence, belonging, support and kindness, safety. <laughs> Super color, fragilistic, SPL, <laughs> gratitude, transformation, peace. Great. Um, that was actually a spelling word when I was in uh, third grade. <laughs> Dance moves. <laughs> uh, quiet, appreciation, love it. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. I love you guys' energy. So we can all put up our jazzy hands. Yeah. We will see you guys next week. Enjoy the rest okay. of your week. Yeah, I, I would like to Monday. share also, I'm co-hosting the Empathy Circle with Duane and Katie on Wednesdays. I also added to Edwin's calendar. I just want to get the opportunity to share with you if you feel like coming this Wednesday at um, 7 p.m. SAST or UTCPU. Ah, plus two, so you find on the Edwin's calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Bye All right, bye. everyone. See you next Monday. Bye, everyone. Have a good Be week. Be safe. Good week.